2023 meeting of the Richmond Sanitary District Board of Commissioners is called to order. This is a special workshop for the purpose of discussing the 2024 budget. So I will pretty much just turn it over to Pat and Emily to go through. Okay. Do you need to say anything up front, Emily? No. All right. Uh, I'm coming off of a cold from last week, so my voice is still a little weird, so I apologize ahead of time here. Um, I will go through 6601 first, if that is okay with everyone. Um, if you remember when the resolution will come to you for the budget, 6601 will not be included. It will uh, be a part of city council, but I'll just so I'll start with it first and kind of set it aside, and then we'll go uh, numerically after that, we'll go through 2221. 6501 and then 6201 or 6201 then 6501 excuse me find 6601 here what's that uh, so let me find it here a second too many pages Everybody got 6601? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll start through here. Um, <clears throat> in 6601, as you all know, this is primarily a tax-funded uh, account. Um, this is for the trash and MRF collection primarily. There are splits out of here, though, that cover broader sanitation pieces. Uh, but because it is tax-funded, um, much of this revenue was put in by the controller's office. Um, these values come to them the same as they always do. Um, there's some, you'll see how this all fits in. I don't know if Emily wants to discuss the circuit breaker piece anymore, um, but I know how that came in. Um, and there was the bill, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but basically kind of extended those property tax caps as well. So there are some things that hurt this fund a little bit in that revenue side on the taxes. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go down through. But overall, the, the revenue is slightly up uh, from before. Uh, I'll move down to the 1,000 accounts then. I will just okay, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> So, Emily, does she need to move oh, her I'm mic sorry. down? <laughs> I always forget to do that. Yeah. Um, so Circuit Breaker does continue to go up, and the city and the sanitation district are at a point now where the amount that we're experiencing from property tax growth is completely, if not more so, wiped out by Circuit Breaker. Um, the challenge is that it is still valid for us to take that growth quotient because the growth quotient also impacts our excise tax amount, our financial institution tax, our commercial vehicle uh, excise tax. So it's a very strange thing, but it's like the only growth that we're seeing from the growth quotient at this point is in those other tax streams, which are very small amounts of growth. Um, the uh, House Enrolled Act that Pat was referring to is 1499, and that was a measure that Governor, Governor Holcomb put into place that limits um, a uh, taxing district's ability to grow beyond 4%. So, and, and that is for 2024 and 2025, unfortunately. So that um, cut it, what we would have anticipated would have been 1% from what we would have expected to grow. But again, even that 1% would have been another 1% on circuit breaker as well. So it's, you know, it's still a loss. So when I see account... 6601 all the way down to 5104 property tax where it shows a $361,000 increase. Right. So, this, and, and this it, report does not show circuit breaker. It does not show it anywhere. In it will show it on the cash flow page, which is the last two um, pages, and it shows how that goes up because that is um, a manual calculation that's not accounted for in BSNA. 
Thank you, Emily. And I think it's also <laughs> important to note that um, this component, the, the, the collection of the trash in our community, is paid for by property taxes because I saw like an edit letter to the editor where they were improperly saying that their trash bill was being increased. Gotcha. I had not seen that okay. letter, but yes, <laughs> it is a it is a thing. Uh, we do okay. get that a lot too at okay. the district, uh, talking about they got a bill for their trash and that doesn't exist. Right. Um, it's included in your property tax. Um, the only time there's ever a bill on trash is. There is $80 a year if you're renting the brown three-yard roll-offs okay. or three-yard uh, uh, dumpsters and the, uh, I think they're 14 cubic yard roll-offs that you can get for $10. You get them for about two days. That's the only charge that's associated with trash. Special pickup mm -hmm. um, and all your trash collection is all included in taxes. Um, I will move on then to the 1,000 accounts, uh, which is the personal services. Um, these accounts overall have a 4% increase. Uh, this comes through the insurance uh, is going up. Um, there was kind of a big opening statement from the mayor at Committee of the Whole and from Sherry Hemingway kind of on this, but basically our, uh, the costs are going up. There's still, I think it was 8% or 7.8, I think roughly 8%. Um, but they're working on some pieces that maybe won't make that quite as large, but it's budgeted at the 8% right now on insurance. And as far as wages going up, the union, ASME union, uh, by their contract is going up the other piece for this year, um, which will go again in 2025. But if you remember, their contract was the Baker Tilly study was done and identified an average or a median uh, uh, rate per job title. Uh, the union agreed that what they would do is per title, wherever they were at currently, I think in the 2022 year, uh, they would move over the course of three years, one third of the way towards that average identified salary for that. So they're moving that 33% towards that gap of where they were being paid towards that uh, in this year. Now, is that, when, as we go through all of the accounts, is that only for ASME or is it going to be for non um, we're not able to give civilian raises this year. Civilians were not given raises. Okay. So that's what you'll see in all the 1,000 accounts. I, I'm, I mean, if there's questions about a specific account number, we can touch that. But almost everything you see there is directly related to, to just those two factors, the insurance and that AFSCME bargaining unit. And you will see that through all the funds we go down through um, today. The next set of accounts, I uh, will just dive into the 2000s then. These are up 6%, roughly $37,000. This is primarily from fuel, our estimated fuel cost. Fuel is um, the driving fuel account number is 6601 0506 203 2210. This is accounting for about 32,000 of that $37,000 increase. There are a few other minor ones and some shuffling going on in there that I won't really talk about much. I will say that there's a $3,000 increase as well in the 6601, 0505, 202, 2410 general supplies. So again, that 3,000 and the 32 for fuel makes up almost all of this increase. But that $3,000 increase in that general supplies is, if you remember, we purchased the asset management software at the end of last year. Uh, this is an expectation. You'll see this in quite a few of the account or the funds that we have. There's a little bit of money put aside for the hardware that'll be associated with that once it rolls out. So the tablets or laptops or whatever we end up going with that will be distributed. So those are kind of spread across all the four funds. Um, I do not have anything else really specific to go over in the 2000s. Like I said, besides those two factors, everything else stays about the same. Um, we've really worked a lot on this budget process over the last few years. Um, and I feel like we came into a really good budget coming into 2023. Um, it's unfortunately the budget process starts in May. So 
knowing how well we did before 2024 is kind of hard to do while you're making that budget. You're only mm -hmm. five months in, but uh, everything seems to be tracking as if it will if it will work. So a lot of items stayed roughly the same. You'll see through here. We felt like we'd weeded everything down to just a bare minimum of fat onto it that just gives us that flexibility to operate. I will move down into the 3,000 accounts. These are up 5%, uh, which totals about $145,000. Um, I want to start out with this one that the largest increase in here comes from the LEAF agreement. If you all remember um, the resolution we just recently did, but the, the sanitary district pays the street department to collect leaves. They collect leaves within the city boundaries. The sanitary district collects leaves um, in the district but outside of the city uh, limits. Um, this was done, as you remember in the resolution that was just brought here, uh, Crone and Associates had did this one before. They did it exactly the same, but it's just fuel costs have went up, labor costs have went up, these types of things have went up. Uh, but that went up about $236,000, so that was a big, a big ticket increase in this line, uh, renewing that. Um, but the old one was about seven, eight years old. Again, we, mm -hmm. I know we just did that resolution, I believe, at the last meeting, so it was pretty fresh. <coughs> um, Otherwise, if you were to take that out, there was a general decrease um, in the 3,000 accounts here. Um, some significant accounts um, was the contractual services, uh, 6601, 0505, 301, um, Some of that we just didn't have as much going on there. Some things we did in-house. Uh, we're no longer doing the cleaning service. Uh, that's something we're doing in-house. So there's some things there that uh, we just decreased from that. Uh, the transfer of funds line, which is the 6601-0505-312-3974. Um, that is related primarily to money that we pay for bonds on and for money that we move into the capital improvement funds. The decrease you see here um, from this account is primarily we didn't move as much into the capital improvement funds this year. Um, I do want to say it shows that it's about $25,000 below last year. It's actually closer to fifty. dollars uh, I made an error. Uh, the count right below it, the 6601-0505-312-3979, which is GIS, That'll show zero. It's because I accidentally tucked it into the transfer fund, the line above that, but we are still paying that GIS interlocal. Uh, so that, that 28,000, it looks like that was reduced is actually in that transfer funds, which won't hurt anything to have it there. We may do a, like an inner department, like an inner account transfer next year or something just so it's you know just clearer. But essentially, uh, the, the transfer of funds account at 3974 was down about $50,000 from the previous year. And again, most of that is from not transferring as much into the capital improvement funds. I do want to take a note why we were in the 31, or in the 3000 accounts that in the uh, 3120, so the 6601 0505 uh, 3120, uh, there is $55,000 in there which is pending a 50% matching grant. Uh, this 55,000 has to do with uh, the recycling, landfill diversion upgrades we've talked about a little bit that we're working towards. This has to do with rebranding and uh, waste audits and things of this nature. Uh, so we do have 55,000 in there that is kind of pending uh, that ability. There's, the EPA put out a new I've said it multiple times, I know talking about the recycle, but just to make a note while we're talking here, but EPA put out an updated strategy on that, and they're really working towards a national 50% uh, diversion of landfill material. They believe that can be diverted. Um, now, again, every landfill is going to have its own specific things coming in and out. Maybe not every one of them is 50%, but I fully see that they're going to put mandates on that at some point. And while there's a lot of grant money out there for that, we're really probably six months behind really being ready to to tackle these but we've been trying to you know throw things out there if we can and we've got lucky a little bit um but 
we're getting ready to come into a waste audit and this will help get further waste audits, which having those hard metrics makes us score better in the grant process for doing these things. So, um, But that's what I have in the 3,000 accounts then. Uh, next, I'll move on to the 4,000s. Um, and I will make a quick note. I probably should have started out with this. You are all familiar with this budget for anybody anybody watching. There's, you'll see basically a duplicate of every line. There's an 0505 version and an 0506. 0506 is mainly the collection side, so that's actually the trash routes that are being run, the fleet, um, and those pieces. The 0505 is typically more of the, the splits, where we talk about it being split with sanitary broad. So that's a lot of the administrative things from the admin building. So paper up there, uh, you know, the wages of the personnel at the administration office, fuel for trucks, you know, split up there from the administration office. So that's really the 0505. And if anyone's really looking deeper, there's a 0318, which is code enforcement. That is also tucked within this, which we've talked about before. Um, but next, I'll go into the 4,000 accounts. Uh, these are down about 4%. The year sheet will probably vary a little for mine. There was a, li a last minute update. Um, so if you are looking um, at the, it's the 4490 account, the 0506 version of the 4490, that got reduced. Um, I think it was $39,000, I think so it was. There was a duplicate entry in the 0505 and the 0506, um, and that got weeded out. So if you're on the, the overall cash flow sheet, which should be the last document in that form, you'll see the net under capital outlays. You'll see under the 0506 sanitation of those three lines, it shows 899 That goes down to 860 um, and that's been done now. I just didn't have an updated version of this uh, when this went out um, in emails. But that, that uh, well, there's a $39,000 decrease. But again, overall then, the 4,000s were down 4%, a total of about $69,000. Uh, this is just from various reduced purchases. As you know, capital is very specific on heavy equipment or or projects and things of that nature. So those are just always moving. Um, and the other, that's just from just different projects and different fleet items being purchased. They're expected to be purchased. Um, I will note that there is also here a an item of $30,000 in the 40, that 0506 4490. Uh, there is an item there that is pending a 50% matching grant. Uh, what that is, is um, we've talked a few times. I don't think the future of our MRF has us sorting. Um, if you look at the new technology that's out there for sorting, um, it's really for really large scale. Um, I have viewed the one in Cincinnati that Rumpke has, and I've viewed a few others, or actually just one other real sorting facility. I mean, they're doing on a scale of like in a day do almost what we do in a year. Um, and they are, they're really not building these, but about a 120 mile radius. I mean, that's just the efficiency. So like even Bloomington and Medora, Medoria, Indiana, who do, Bloomington does more than what Richmond does uh, from a recycle standpoint, they don't sort there, they ship it. They're basically a transfer station they collect and then they ship it to the, the Cincinnati place. Um, as you know, right now, we hand sort all of our pieces. So if you were to look at our schedule for trash, we collect one week, or for recycle, excuse me, we collect one week and then sort the next week. Um, as that equipment's beyond its useful life, I just don't think it's cost effective to pay capital to replace it in kind. I believe we can not sort and then just add more collection in on that off week. Um, only 41% of Richmond or so has a Richie at this point, so there's a lot of room to grow Richies. And this $30,000 you see pending a matching grant is really for the purchase of more Richies so that we could um, start working towards that. Because if that machine fails now and we're not ready to go to what we ultimately want to go to, we still, there are ways we could not have to repair it now. If you remember this year, we had like a $40,000 repair on that piece of equipment. I don't think I would probably spend the 40000 We can 
rent a compact trailer from Rumpke. We've looked into it, and we could compact our commingle and send it down to their site in Cincinnati to be further sorted. Um, our cardboard and paper would still be sorted at the curb, and we could bail that, uh, but it would just take away the sorting. But that way I can use that, uh, the same labor I already have and the same equipment I already have, and just go get... Uh, more on those off weeks. So the, this 50% is just to buy those Richies and you know there's a lot of work that would have to go into that altering routes and things of that nature. But I went ahead and put that in because I think it's more cost effective in the end than keep repairing a piece of equipment that we know is going to go away in a year or two. So, Did, What was the percent you said of consumers, of our customers who use Richies? About 41. 41. It's between 41 and 48. There's mm -hmm. some crossover in the data, and it's mm -hmm. a little hard to tell from a quick look, but it's right around there. Um, and the other piece I know we talked about, I won't dive too much into it. It's just things to look at, too, is frequency. I know in cardboard, which we've tracked really heavily since we just started it, uh, we most people only put it out about half of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a case that maybe you don't have to go every other week. Maybe you went every third week, you know, and... That would allow us to help grow as well um, without expending any more real O&M. It's just really look at frequency that's necessary. Um, so those things are all being kind of researched. And that's where these waste audits, I talked about having the match in the 3000s, that will really help us get those metrics uh, dialed in. Um, and that's really the overall note here uh, for all the 6601 that I have. I will note, I didn't really say specifically, but in that transfer of funds to the Capital Improvement Fund, there's $200,000 going to go into that improvement fund from this year. Um, and that will be marked for the high-rate treatment uh, project, which is that, that large ending project for the long-term control plan in the CSO uh, separation. That's all I have in 6601. We can move on to its capital improvement fund if you would like to, the 6607, unless there are more questions on 6601. All right, hearing none, I'll dive quickly into the 6607. Um, so 6607, if you remember, was the capital improvement fund we set up a couple of years ago. Um, what we have, as I just said, $200,000 is proposed to be transferred into that account. And coming out of it, we have two items. One is for $829,111, and that is for high-rate treatment design. Uh, we spent some this year as well. We pulled out of different funds this year and, and started that design, and we have that set for next year. There's also $252,000 out for landfill cell closure. Now, a couple things I want to say on this. First, when we uh, adjusted the landfill rates um, last year, at the end of last year, we discussed that historically the tax fund has always split capital with the landfill 50-50. With that rate being adjusted, the, this tax fund will kind of be weaned off from being used to supplement that uh, capital purchases. There is 252 because it just takes a few years for us to build up that revenue from the rate adjustment. Um, so there's a, a minor amount. It's not a 50-50 split, but there's a small amount in there. Um, and after this year, I believe, I'd have to look back, but I don't think there's any more uh, capital from the tax fund being projected to be used to assist the landfill. The landfill will be kind of uh, self-sustaining then with the rates that were put in. But this 252000 the other thing I want to comment on is this for landfill cell closure. We've estimated this, but really item will determine when that gets closed. We don't, at this point, honestly, we think it probably won't happen next year. But when we were building the budget, it was too uncertain, and we wanted to have it tucked in place. We know we're getting tight, and we know we're getting close. Um, but it's tucked in here. You'll hear me talk about it when we get to the landfill uh, fund, the 2221 <coughs> as well. There's money set aside for the closure. Um, that could happen, uh, though at this point in time, I think we're probably slightly leaning more towards it probably will not occur, um, in which case you know, it may be a 2025 thing, in which case we could just reappropriate these funds at that point when we're doing the, the, the 25 budget. Um, 
So uh, they're in the end projected to come out if both of those things were spent was $1,081,111. Uh, would be coming out of this improvement fund with 200,000 going into this fund. And that is all I have. There's really only three account numbers in that whole fund, unless there are further questions. All right, hearing none, we will go ahead and dive into the 2221 fund, which is the landfill fund. Um, I do have one question. We did not go over the, the cash flow page. Okay. Yeah, we can. That. Uh, yeah, I just kind of went in broad strokes there, but we can go over any piece of the cash flow on 6207 or 6201. Uh, 07, I guess, is fine. I just wanted to, um, I guess, just make ask the question because I see a big range of when you get down to the end of the day on those of the operating and capital balance percent. Mm -hmm. Is there a target? I mean, is I, I guess my concern is if somebody looking at that and saying, well, gee, you've got a whole lot of cash, you know, you've got a whole lot of cash. I would say that's not somewhere. a concern for these capital funds because that's the point is that they're all just right. for large capital purchases. And I think that's why and I was actually thinking, I was like, I don't need to comment on this because it's been commented on for the past couple of years. But this is an example of why it was so important that we set up these funds so it's not showing in the 66 is a 6601 oh, yeah. um, right. that there's such a large balance there um, because it's just being preserved for a large capital purchase. Yeah, and it's, there's no O&M, so you're not trying to hold like a, a certain amount back so you could stay operating if you ran out of cash. It's just earmarked for large capital projects. Uh, so when we get to the end of 6601, correct? then we, we're sitting at... It, Previously, I think it was 40%. Now it's 29%. And obviously, that all depends on where we end right. um, 2023 general, because that cash carries forward. In general, what um, has been advised of council in the past and what they often look for is like a 10 to 15%. So obviously, that would be more than like that's, of course, a minimum, but that's what, you know, they kind of stick on. So I, I would say, you know, that's a, that's a good yeah. I know in the other funds, we typically shoot for 25% mm -hmm. when we're building the rates for bonds and things like that. I know that's right. what we shoot for. So uh, trying to hold that there. Um, yeah, the 6601 is the most challenging one of that being tax funded, mm -hmm. um, having less control as, as things O&M and capital continue to go up. The, the revenue doesn't, and it's a little harder to try to match right. that you know, with the constraints yeah. that are in that. Yeah. And I think it's really important because, as you said, that, that circuit breaker does not show up earlier, and it's um, it's two point seven million dollars. It's not insignificant. It's it's a right. Large and yes. and I would say um, that where the circuit breaker started completely wiping out any increase that we got in prep property tax from the growth quotient. Like this is kind of. Um, uncharted territory for the state. Um, we are among such a lucky few that are in that position where, and they all, they knew it would happen mm -hmm. at some point. Um, but it, it then starts to beg the question, what, what do we do now? Do we continue to take the growth quotient or do we stop growing? Like, which is not really an option for us mm -hmm. to say, we're not making any budget changes forever. Right. Um, so, um, like I said, we are one of, I, I, I can't remember, it's been a while since I've been to a presentation on it, but we are one of the few that are at that point. And it, it comes to a point when um, our elected officials need to do something. Mm -hmm. And we're at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and as you know, we mentioned, not to belabor it, and I know there's not a, a, I guess at this point, a lot that we can do, but the fact that inflation has been so significant, and our employees not being, uh, you know, entitled to a, a salary increase this year, um, I feel is, I guess, one of the things I would, you know, obviously have pushed for and that, you know, would have been very, 
favorable Absolutely for not affordable in, in any mm -hmm. other way. Not that it's mm -hmm. to go into it too far in this format, but the only reason other funds are able to pass a budget is because of grant funding. So we're at that point. We're beyond that point. So it's looking for it's, other. It's unfortunate. Um, these guys, especially Greg and Pat, know mm -hmm. raises for the city employees have kind of been my my passion and the thing that I was really hoping to make a difference on. And I think um, we've done the best that we could with what we've had up to this point. And again, it's up. I think um, it's up to our taxpayers to vote for. Um, the types of changes that will help us be able to continue to do those things in the future. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, apologies. I didn't touch that uh, mm -hmm. cash flow. We'll, uh, we can move on then to 2221 uh, fund. Um, I'll do broad strokes down through the uh, detail page, but if there are any specific accounts, again, feel free to bring those up, and then we'll hit the cash flow page at the very end there. Um, in 2221, the 5,000 account, there's a 4.8% increase. Uh, this is based upon that rate modification that we, in, that we put in. Um, so there's a few pieces in that. Um, so the, the increase, if you remember, is only 2% in and of itself. Um, so why is it 4.8 showing here? The other part of this, and I'll get down to it when I get down to the uh, 3,000 accounts, but if you remember, the WUR increased their tipping fee by a dollar, and we're just a pass-through for that. So that also comes in in the revenue side, but it goes out in the 3,000 account. It's just we collect it at the scale, and we pay it back to them. So there's an extra $80,000 that comes from just their increase of the tipping fee that normally isn't added. So I added that to the revenue so it balances the whole thing because, again, it's just really a pass-through charge that we collect for them. The 1,000 accounts, um, there is a, uh, a slight increase here. I do want to make a note that there's a difference on your sheet than it is on my sheet. Um, that the overall, uh, I'm not going to call it specific accounts, but it's kind of in the, it's also on the cash flow side, but the overall, um, let me see how it's actually worded on this sheet here, which line it is. It is, okay, it's in just the personnel services. It's just that totalized value. Um, it is actually supposed to be $1,145,052.51. Um, that change is there are a couple positions in the union that... Um, we are changing. Uh, there are two positions. One's called a, the truck driver position, and the other is called the processor B. But they have kind of always substituted to some degree for the operators there. Um, and since it's just a small department, it didn't make sense to me to have two different titles. And then <clears throat> it was just really hard to, if they were absent, right, to fill in for them. And since they all had very, very similar duties and requirements, it was just making a change and calling the operator. So there was a, a slight move. I think they both move up one grade as the, the Baker Tilly study was concerned. Um, so that was adjusted. It's kind of in labor management at this point in time, but we wanted to have it put into the budget just in case that goes through. So that was done afterwards here. Um, uh, just confirming, even though we talked about it in June, it was just one of those things that, we weren't sure if it would happen, um, but then it look, really looks like it's going to, so it was changed here. So there's just a slight increase of that. Um, but overall, the increase you're going to see in the 1,000s is just related to what we talked about in the first uh, fund. It's insurance increases and the AFSCME union's uh, wage increase based upon their contract. The, I'll just go ahead and jump into the 2,000 accounts. Uh, those are up approximately 7%, uh, around $11,000. Uh, 
this is primarily from the fuel account, uh, which is again, it's always that 2210 account. Um, and I know it says vehicle operation and maintenance, and that's a little bit maybe of a confusing piece. I know I remember that when I came into the budget in 2020, <clears throat> that was one of the things I was like, where is fuel at? Because there's a fuel line in some places and not in some, but it, all the fuel always is in the 2210 accounts, which is that vehicle operation and maintenance. Um, but you'll see um, of the $11,000 increase total to all the 2000s, approximately 7000 of that is is fuel alone. Um, and again, we're trying to track it off of where we are now. As you all know, fuel is volatile. Um, that contract will get bid out later this year, so we really don't know what it will be. So it was just trying to track where we are now and, and picking an estimated value. I would really like to see that it comes down and we don't spend that, but uh, it's just trying to be prepared for that. Um, that is primarily the driving factor. The other piece here is there's a, a $3,000 increase again in the general supplies, which is the 2221, 0503, 202, 2410, which just has to do with the same as the general supplies that went up in the 6601. It has to do with hardware associated with the asset management uh, that we kind of separated out. And together, those two things make up the bulk of the increase. Everything else roughly stays the same. Uh, next, I will move down to the 3,000 accounts. Uh, these are down 19%, uh, which is approximately $270,000. Um, the biggest factors here that are at play um, is the transfer of funds which is that 3974 account there. It's almost at the bottom of the uh, itemized list there, the next to last one. Uh, there's nothing being planned to go into the capital improvement funds. Um, at this point, I, at this point, I would probably have put money in the improvement fund. The, the reason we didn't is we didn't know how close we were going to get to a balanced budget. Um, but... Uh, there were a few pieces that were really late to come in data-wise, and they came in less. So there's actually, when we get to the whole end of this, uh, this budget will show on the plus side, actually. We're going to go up almost $90,000 upwards, and I probably, if I'd have known it would have landed like that, I would have probably put that 90000 in the improvement fund. Uh, but it can be done later. Again, it's going to stay in the overall you know, cash balance, so it's not like it couldn't be put in there later if, if there was necessary to do that. Um, so at any time, say we get to the end of a year, can we then a, a That's something we could do. In, in we could appropriate or even, even reduce sections of budget year. if we had to, you know, and just mm -hmm. move money or, or have that discussion next year that we want to move it into there. We could do that. Um, and it's just one of those things that maybe like the year after – bring this back up and maybe I go a little heavy next year for the 2025 year knowing that we just take some of this back out just based upon where things balance out. Because There's definitely things I know like this, the construction of the next cell. We know that starting next year you'll see much larger amounts of money being tucked back so that way when a cell comes around it'll be 100% basically paid for out of these improvement funds and I, I definitely would have put it in there. We just, we knew we were going to get close on, the on being a balanced budget. Um, but that, that is the largest um, <clears throat> change in the, uh, the decrease that you're going to see, that $270,000. Most of that was in that transfer of funds. Everything else there is, is really small uh, movements, I'll say, uh, on the overall, but we can discuss any piece there. I mean, I know the professional services is down, but again, this some of this comes from uh, doing some things in house, like the cleaning service and some pieces like this. There's just minor adjustments and movements in those pieces, um, and or they're based on uh, just where we're at uh, historically. Um, there's a decrease, like in telephone and facsimile. They're just, they're just based on historical of where we're at currently on those charges. Um, and estimates. Um, I will go ahead then and move on to the uh, 
four thousands. I, I kind of already made note in the three thousands, I guess, before we leave that. But again, that uh, the um, transfer of funds, even though it's overall down because we didn't put anything in the improvement, there's a chunk of that that is, or not the transfer funds, the uh, state fees and district fees has to do with that WUR tipping fee, but we accounted for that in the revenue. So the changes there are accounted up top. Now we can move on to the 4,000s. Um, these are down 41%, uh, uh, quite a big chunk. Um, the main reason for that is the equipment, heavy equipment. As you guys have seen several times when we bring those dozers and compactors and things like that, they are, we usually get a good trade in because of the way we've, we they do that rotation of the fleet. But without a trade in, you know, those things are three quarters of a million dollars piece so we just have less of that coming in um, so that was really the driving factor here again though uh, a piece of that in the other structures uh, column the 4310 in the in the 4000s um, the money you see in there uh, is directly reflected like we said that of a landfill cell closure which may uh, not be needed which that 700,000 that you see in there, the, the entirety of that is for that cell closure should it be needed. So again, that goes back to, it's not 50-50 with the 6601. If you remember, it was like 252, this is 700. So it kind of scaled that off. Um, but again, it's there just in case I didn't, uh, does require us to, to close a cell. Um, that's all I really have on the detailed lines. We can go ahead and move to the cash flow sheet. Um, if that's all right. Um, the cash flow, if you go down as it's broken up into uh, basically how we discuss this, the, you have a top the revenue, which is all the 5,000s. And then this bursements, you'll see uh, the personal services, which are the 1,000 accounts. Um, you'll see supplies, which are the 2,000 accounts, and the other services and charges, which are the 3,000 accounts, and those values will follow along with the percentages as presented. Um, there's capital outlays um, in there, but at the bottom under the cash flow summary, um, again, you'll see uh, that there is an increase um, in cash Overall, it's $89,128.15. Again, there's a slight adjustment there as there was adjustment in those personal services. So the sheet on yours won't be quite uh, the same as it actually is at this point in time. But you'll get corrected of these. That'll be as part of the resolution. There'll be all these attachments with the updated versions when those come in. Uh, but it's $89,128.15 that it is going up. So that puts us over over 50% uh, cash balance in this. And again, uh, some of the items that came in were late. If they hadn't been, I would have used that excess uh, or I would have taken us to a, a flat, even budget and moved all excess money into the capital improvement to help pay for those landfill cell construction when it comes back around. And another piece that we have not yet got to and it's in the improvement funds and we're just not there yet is asset replacement. Uh, you probably remember me talking several times, but SRF no longer is going to be funding asset replacement, that your rates should encompass replacement of assets mm -hmm. in kind. And we really haven't got to a point where we're really doing that yet. We're just trying to get these established and get these large capital projects over there. We're having to get rate adjustments, as you know, to, mm -hmm. to be able to look forward to that. But we're not really even to that point. But you'll start seeing... There was a couple things in the 6201, the treatment plant, where we are already doing that. But in 2221 uh, and 6601, we're just not quite there yet. Uh, but we know that we need money that's really going back for that because we will not be able to, to get these, these good SRF funds and loans that we've been before for this type of stuff. Any other questions on... On the 2221, before we move into its improvement fund, which is the 4560, I believe. Yep, 
Yeah, forty six fifty. I I don't know. I always want to say forty five sixty instead of forty six. Anybody there? Mm -hmm. Um, this fund. There's nothing going in, as we've discussed. Coming out is planned to be $380,000. So in addition to the 700 you saw in the actual capital line of 2221, is $380,000 um, as well that's there for uh, cell closure if it were to come around. So in the end, we would expect the closure to be about $1.2 million, which if you take the 700 that was in capital, this 380,000 that would come out of this improvement fund and the 250 or so that was in the 6607 uh, improvement fund, that's kind of getting us to that estimated cost for that closure. Uh, is this the one that we talked about with the additional appropriation being on there that shouldn't have been because it's showing on the cash flow because this, this cash flow needs work <laughs> if that's not the case, at least what I'm looking at. In the 40... 4650. And it's showing, which piece are you talking about? I'm looking at the cash flow page and it's showing um, going into the negative and there's an additional appropriation. I, if you recall, we talked like last week about some additional appropriations or activity had been getting carried over in error when Tracy was starting the templates. So I'm just wondering if that's the only piece that needs to be taken out because it's showing that fund running negative. Let me see that. I don't. I, ha I have the, the newer copy, okay. so I, it looks, mine doesn't show that, and I didn't check you, that against okay. that again. I just want to make sure. I think I thought that that was one that we corrected, but. So we're on, it looks like page six of my PDF. It shows it going to a negative 672,000. Yeah, that yeah that's not true. Okay. If we spend the 380 that's set to come out on cell closure, if we did spend that, that would take it down to what's left in the account is just interest that's accumulated. So it'll be a handful of thousand dollars would be left in there is all, but it, okay. it's not negative. That was just an error. And okay. I didn't catch that on the updated sheet uh, that the one that you guys had still had that on there. I apologize. Basically, any of our transfer of funds accounts can't go negative. No fund no. at all can go <laughs> negative. <laughs> they're just in and out. No. <laughs> yeah, there were just a couple of these that for some reason through the pool of BSA's report, it was grabbing um, old additional appropriations and, and mm. tossing them in there on the cash flow sheet. The detail page was all correct, uh, but the cash flow sheet was grabbing this, which was throwing yeah. off the yeah. balance at the end there. Yeah. And that's all I have for 2221, Landfill Fund, unless there are other questions, and it's capital improvement. All right. We can move to 6201. All right, uh, in the 5,000 accounts, uh, you will see a 13% increase. Again, um, if you remember, we did that rate adjustment at the end of last year. Um, this is reflective of that. Um, when we did last year's budget coming into this year, we didn't have the entire, you know, we obviously didn't have all the information at that mm -hmm. point and what the rate increase would be. So. Some of this year's, uh, our budgeted estimate is below what it should have been. So next year's, even though it shows a 13% increase, is not a 13% in the rate adjustment. It's just 
percent increase of what we budgeted last year, which happened before we had the rate adjustments in place. Um, and if you look through, if you look at the like the primary version of that, which is the uh, user fee sewer, which is the fifty eight nineteen account, you will see like activity through halfway through this year is is well over half of what was budgeted last year. So you'll see that that's primarily where you see a lot of that increase. The, the percentage itself um, going up is, is smaller than 13% of the actual <clears throat> going into 2024. Um, beyond that, the rest of those, um, there's not a lot that's designed to be changed. The user fee surcharge, um, goes up some as well but again that's just in line with that rate and again a lot of that percentage you see um, is because we really didn't tuck anything in in last year's budget because we weren't sure where that was going to land so even though the percentage shows larger it's not really larger than what we actually expect to take um, and that's really all I have to discuss in the five thousands unless there's more specific questions on any specific account numbers. If not, I will go ahead and move into the 1,000 accounts. Um, go ahead and say it here on these. Um, where we discussed in 6601, there are two different sub funds there for sanitation, 0505 and 0506. In 6201, there are four sub funds. So you will see a lot of repeated account names because there is an 0504, an 0505, an 0507, and an 0508. Um, and respectively, that goes to sewer maintenance is 0504, admin is 0505, the operations of the treatment plan is 0507s, and the laboratory is 05, and pre treatment is 0508. In the overall 1,000 accounts, um, looking at all four sub funds, um, and they're all put together there, um, there is a 3.9% increase. Uh, this is for the AFSME bargaining unit uh, that we've discussed and the union and, in, and the insurance uh, overall. Um, I don't, other than that, there's no other specific moves. There's no changes of title or, or anything of that, or positions going on in the 6201 fund. Uh, I will go ahead then and move to the 2000s. There is a 6.4% increase, um, which is a roughly $30,000. Um, the bulk of this, um, it, that we're trying to account for comes in the chemical account. Um, which let me find what that number is. Twenty two forty one. Yes, twenty two forty one. I hadn't had that written down. Um, is a bigger individual chunk of this. Uh, if you remember, we've tried bidding out a little bit more frequent. Usually, we hold those uh, contracts for three years. Or they're renewed. They're one year with two year optional renews. We've bid them out every year um, because in 2021, due to supply chain and COVID, the cost of disinfection chemicals, which is two of the four that we really purchase, they went up 700%. Um, and it's in our permit, we have to do this. So mm -hmm. it's just one of those pieces. Luckily, with the upgrade of the treatment plant that we finished the construction project we did, we no longer have to use alum, which was a really large chemical use. Um, previously, um, we were doing some things changing in treatment, but roughly we were spending 200,000, 200 and some thousand dollars per year on that. And that went up through COVID as well, but we're down to where we use none of that. So there was a savings there. So that really help offset, I mean, because you'll see only a $5,000 increase, and that is by no means, you know, the whole story of a 700% increase in those other chemicals. It's just luckily we were uh, able to drop one off simultaneously. Um, but that was the biggest piece. The other one is the, uh, the 0505-2410, the general supplies line. 
Um, again, that goes back to what we talked about in the last two funds. This is really related to hardware that's associated with the asset management software we intend to buy. Or we've already purchased, but we intend to buy the hardware that will be implemented with that. Um, there was some money set aside this year as well, so it depends on how far that goes on how much of this is actually needed next year. Um, and that's all I really have in the 2000s. Everything else roughly stays the same. There's some little minor movements here or there uh, based upon minor inflationary costs that we've seen or where we're tracking this year, but nothing of significance or any significant alterations in those. I'll go ahead and move to the 3000s then. Um, these are down 6%, uh, approximately half of a million dollars most notably, and we tried to use as best we could, um, this is in bond payment. Uh, there was a bond that fell off. Mm -hmm. So in that 39, the 050, 0505, 3974, mm -hmm. yes, um, there was uh, $880,000 less that we, that it's really associated. Um, actually, I think it was slightly more than that, but we increased our that 3974 also has the funds that go into the capital improvement fund. But so it was a little bit more than the 880,000 you see there. We used as best we could trying to stay within the balanced budget. We tried to uh, get as much as we could to the capital improvement fund, primarily for that high rate treatment project that's coming up. Um, we know that that's going to be very costly and we're trying to do our best to have money set aside for that. Um, and you know, as supply chain and everything else, the inflationary cost, the projection just keeps keeps going up. And when you're already at tens of millions of dollars, a couple percent is a lot of money. Um, so it was really trying to do that. But overall, this account is down. But primarily, like I said, that is from a bond that fell off. Um, I do want to note, however, that there is a significant increase um, in one line item. This is in the 3120. Uh, the 0507 3120, which is the land, or 3180, excuse me, the land application biosolids account. Um, that increases of $244,500. Um, what we are trying to do here is go to a Class A biosolid. Uh, we've discussed biosolids overall a lot. We've made a lot of changes that have driven costs down as far as being able to get solids to the back end um, of our process. That back end process, though, is limited. It is, it is liquid injected onto farm fields. And as crops are being modified to the point that the, the planting window is getting earlier and earlier, that ability for us to get injected in the spring is getting harder and harder, um, especially because you always had to work around weather in the first place. So our windows are getting smaller and smaller um, and it's also held up primarily to farmers. We have a lot of ground permitted, but primarily only a few different farmers use our material, and should even one of those stop, the ability for us to get rid of this uh, would be very, very difficult. The other way to do it would be either to dry it or haul it. Drying it is roughly twice as much as it is to liquid inject, and hauling it was almost three times as much, so that's <coughs> not the routes we want to go. Um, so this is kind of forward thinking. We, there is a process where we can internally dry it um, and go to a Class A product, and we believe this is what that cost would look like in a, in a project that we're kind of working on at this point in time, uh, getting data back on. Uh, so we would expect that, but that would give us tremendous flexibility um, and in the end be able to uh, just operate the plant much smoother. Um, and it would kind of, again, not put us in these positions where, because even though this is approximately a 50%, a little less than a 50% increase than what we are now, if that window were to close on us next year, it would have went up 100% at, at a bare minimum. If, and if it was, if the weather didn't work for you on pressing or drying at that point and you had to pay triple, then, you know, if it was to go up, you know, that much further, this seemed like the better the better aspect to take this approach. And should the the kind of planning we got going come to fruition and we can act upon it next year and, and it just goes up this much, that's what we felt like was the better choice uh, in position long term. So the increase here 
is to do the land is because we expect land application to increase. So it's budgeting for an increase in the cost of land application, or does it include the cost of looking of beginning the other process? This would include time? doing the whole other process if okay. it can go into effect. We've already we're already working on it's a, it's part of their contract that it can be reviewed. Um, and we, so we both have Donahue and Associates, which are doing, looking at overall plant upgrades, and Merrill Brothers, who holds a contract, which has to evaluate these things for us. They're both looking at things, and what we think that would look like in a financing option to just go to that next year would be this cost. Okay. If we cannot go there and land application goes up, this also would serve as that buffer. Okay. So either way, we know it would go up some that we budgeted for. We go towards what we want to go to first, and it's not just paying for. Is it? Is there a cost in here of a capital item for the drawing at all? There would not be. There is in in here. There is a piece under capital, which is it is related and isn't related. We have two structures at the treatment plant called roughing towers. Mm -hmm that really haven't been in service in quite a while and they were actually taking out taken out of our permit during that construction project we did at the treatment plant um, but in 2017 2018 we also had a structural engineer come around and look at all of our all of our through the whole treatment plant and these were deemed that they only had about 10 years of life safely left on them anyway and they would have to be torn down mm -hmm. regardless so we are tearing those down i think there's a cost in here of I think 500,000 ought to see when we get to that specific okay. line. But what we want to do would go there. The process will set in that area. So tearing those down is, is related to that, but it had to come down for safety purposes anyway. But so there, it's indirectly touching that. Uh, we may not have done it this in 24. It probably could have held the 26, but it would have had to come down regardless. But we're speeding that up to give us, that would be the space that's utilized for um, if we have to, if some equipment has to get parked there to, to do what we have to do. But that is it, no other direct equipment. And it depends on how that process goes. That increase of 244 mm -hmm. could be something that slides over to capital if that's what it looks like, or it could just be in a, like a service type agreement is what we kind of expect may happen. So it's somebody else is using their capital, but it's just in a different way or using it for different equipment to process us than the land application that we currently use. And that is all I have really to go over. Um, specifics in the... Um, in the 3000s, unless there are other questions. Um, most everything else kind of stayed the same. Again, these minor changes that we, we've talked about. I mean, there was a dip in professional services, uh, but that goes up and down every year. We talk about that. That's really based upon what project you have going on. Um, and again, that kind of touches that cleaning service and things like that that we do in-house now. So there's a few things rolled into that. And there was uh, the 0507 3621 repair and maintenance uh, yeah there it was a decrease there of of some money and again that was just tracked upon history and just refining that a little bit but <clears throat> compared to the land application and the uh, bond those are very small movements um, in relationship to the overall uh, 3,000 accounts in this fund uh, the next item I will discuss is the 4,000 accounts. Um, overall, this is up $200,000. Again, kind of looking at these, you don't expect it to be static year per year. Uh, it's based upon items. Now, what we do do, um, and I know I, this isn't really included in this, but I, I've sent you all this. Uh, the five-year capital that we mm -hmm. have running. What we try to shoot for is per per kind of sub-department within all of sanitation, we shoot for a five-year average. So we know that what that, I know what that should be per department, and that's kind of trying to balance the budget, knowing roughly what should be set aside for capital. 
Uh, but that's an average. So some years you're slightly above average, some years you're slightly below. But our five-year track per subdepartment fits within that neatly. Um, but a big chunk of this 200 you're going to see is related to uh, the treatment plant, uh, which is the 4413 account. And this has to do with that roughing tower demolition, which we just discussed, um, which has in it, yes, uh, $500,000 um in that for that um removal um, which goes above takes that 4413 above its normal average but again it's overall in five years it, it comes back around into that I'm going down through here, the other piece that I'll just, I'll make note of a couple pieces just individually, but um, the 4412 equipment pumping station, um, a little bit less is put into that for next year than was this year. Uh, again, those are specific tasks that are associated with that. And the other bigger one that is just less than it normally was um, is the 4415 maintenance equipment. Um, Again, it's just specific items that just drive this cost. There was no, let's try to do this or not that. It was, again, they they plan out kind of a five-year outlook. They try to shoot for that average, and they just basically prioritize where they think things will fall per year uh, to maintain that. And that's all I have in the 4,000, so I'll kind of bring it around to the cash flow page unless there are other questions. You go through this again as the breakdown you will see uh, in the broad strokes I went through it will line up with what you see for the five thousands in the top and then in disbursements you get your one two and three thousand accounts again the things we discussed kind of line up with that um, very closely the capital outlay uh, the same way big piece kind of talking about is that very bottom piece is kind of taking those broad strokes and putting it together for that budgeted cash flow summary. Um, your sheet, if it shows an additional appropriation on it of 977448 that will come off. Again, that's what we talked about a little bit in that 4650 account, uh, that grabbing something that, that doesn't exist in this, that it should have come off. It's grabbing an old value there. Um, but if you look overall, then this budget will show a decrease in cash and it should be 860,438, um, dollars. Um, and that's a decrease in cash. So it leaves 31% still in this budget, which is above what we would like. I do want to state though, that even though this shows that decrease and it's still a large number, uh, that $1,465,000 is going to capital improvement. So again, even though we're going down in here, um, a big chunk of that is going into the capital improvement to be earmarked for projects. I also want to note that in this year's, the 2023 budget, there is a little over $1 million in sewer projects. Um, and Elijah could speak to this a little better if it's necessary, but the timing doesn't look like it's gonna hit this year and we'll roll into next year. And that's included in this. So even though we're showing 860 decrease, technically 1.1 1, 1 million or so of this year's funds won't be used this year. Um, and we're willing to do an official budget uh, decrease if, if this body would like that. And when we come around to the resolution, we could do that to show that here um, if that was desired. Um, but with that, being stated, it's it's technically more like a three hundred thousand dollar increase in the overall cash balance, um, not a decrease. And again, a three hundred thousand increase plus one point four six is going into capital improvement funds. Mm -hmm. And again, some data comes in later. I would have probably tried to shoot for zero. I would have put instead of a three hundred increase, I would have put all that back in the capital improvements because we know the high rate treatment will cost that much. So if we do do an official decrease. 
Um, that may be a thing is to do an official transfer at the end of the year or something of that into that improvement fund or at the beginning of the year. That's all I have on 6201. Um, if everybody is, is okay, we can move to 6207. Oops. Capital improvement fund that goes with this. Um, going into this, as we just stated, there is $1,465,000. Uh, 1.2 million of that is going into high rate treatment. Um, and then the rest of that, uh, the $265,000 that is left, is going into basically asset replacement uh, at the treatment plant. Um, one of that is for RAS pumps, which RAS is return activated sludge, but those are a very expensive set of four pumps. Um, that are a must in the process uh, requirement. And we know that the replacement of those is probably a little over a million dollars to replace all four of those. So we've been slowly for the last couple of years putting money back for that. We know they're getting close to the end of their, their life anyway. Um, and there's just some uh, tanks in here. There's $25,000 set aside of that 260 in the, the treatment plant side. 240 is for the RAS, and 25,000 is for some tank repair that we know will likely be coming. And again, that's just asset replacement. So in the end, 1,465,000 going in. Uh, coming out is uh, $200,000, um, and that is for um, roughing tower demo as well. So the 500,000 of it was in the capital of 6201, and 200,000 um, would be coming out of this improvement fund and these funds were you know when we put back here we specifically call out what they're for that two hundred thousand dollars was put back for the roughing tower demolition a couple of years ago and then overall we can go to that cash flow sheet but it's sort of again you're not really looking at it in the same sense it's for capital projects nothing's going in the negative it's just going up significantly and again it's just because there's a lot more going in than coming out on this but it's just how we're earmarking for projects specifically that's all I have on 6207 unless there are further questions all right. if not we will go ahead and move to the 6501 the stormwater fund In the 5,000 accounts, uh, you will see an increase set there, um, a small increase. That is uh, really, it, it's just following historical projections. We always try to be conservative with that based on activity. There was no rate increase or any, any piece to this. Um, it's just trying to refine what we see on activity and, and adjust the estimate. So that slight increase you see there is just based upon uh, the 1,000 accounts, um, you will see virtually no change. This, this fund only has two civilians that are paid out of the salary piece, and uh, as Controller Palmer stated, there's no civilian raises in place. There's some insurance adjustment here that, that makes up. There's like a $300, I think, change um, total, and that has to do with insurance projections. Next, I'll go ahead and move to the 2,000 accounts then. There is a 9.7% increase here, um, which equates to about $3,200. Um, this is actually just from an error on my part in the 2023 budget. Um, if you remember early this year, we came around and did a couple of appropriations one of those was for a fund that I missed here um, in the budget process last year. 
there was a need or a line item written that I did not get into BSNA. We corrected that early this year, um, but that still shows up here as an increase, but it's, it's really not. It would basically have been a zero change. Um, in these 3,000 accounts, uh, a total uh, budget-wise, um, I do also show, um, again, the transfer out at 39.74. There's just less going into the improvement funds. Oh, excuse me, I jumped ship there. I jumped lines. Uh, we're in 2,000 accounts. Um, yeah, you'll see if that if that 3,200 <clears throat> wasn't there. Um, there's a little bit in general supplies that change, but that goes to exactly what we've said in every other account that that goes with hardware purchases against the asset management. Now we can move to 3,000. Sorry about that. Uh, there's an 18.3% increase. This primarily comes from transfers to the improvement fund, uh, which is that 3974. Um, that transfer out um, goes for bond repayment and for cap money moving to the capital improvement. And we just increased that capital improvement uh, funds a little bit from last year. Uh, we felt like we had the ability to do that. Uh, so we did do that increase. The other line is contractual services um, that you see some movement in. And that just goes back to what we talk about a lot on these. It just has to do with what projects and different things that are going on or what we expect to do. Um, there's some pieces on that too. Um, when you look here, I believe it has to do with some of the new MS4 um, requirements that we expect. Yeah, so there's a little bit going towards that. Um, there's also just some here on the things that are tucked into this is just like our on-call emergency services. Um, so there's just some anticipated site changes there. Um, there's some software maintenance tucked into here um, as well, um, which the asset management, if you remember, when we purchased that, you know, it has a software uh, agreement. So there's some a little bit tucked into here on this. It was spread out on all the funds, but you'll see that in this account or this not account, this fund, which overall is, is smaller. Um, you just notice it a little bit more now that that's added in there, which you don't see that in the others, especially because the others had the split for like the cleaning service. So when that came off and this came on, you didn't notice as much, but in 650, uh, uh, one, you do, you do actually see that. Um, Again, that's primarily then the 3,000 accounts, an increase, but most of it from the improvement fund and a little bit on that asset management. In the 4,000 accounts, there is a 20% increase. Um, this is mostly CSO-related projects that are scheduled. Um, and I have an itemized list of those. Um, And I'll kind of just read through those real quick. This is a smaller fund, and it's showing that increase here. But um, there are some things we have in there all the time, like those emergency repairs. And you guys know that, like some lining things of that nature that we always leave some funds in. But we do have some long-term control plan stuff on Round Barn Road. Uh, that section uh, has some money in there that, you know, that's a very specific piece which is at $300,455 of the 4331 land improvements drainage account number. Um, but also in there is like we were saying, there's that program storm sewer improvements. It's kind of always in there. There's $413,000 for that. Um, and emergency repairs, $100,000. So again, of that bulk, a lot of it's some, those things. And then you, those, maintenance type issues or repair type issues but you get a few things like projects and again that CSO long-term control plan round barn is is in there and that's just that's what's showing you that little bit of movement that you see um, 
that's really all I have on the really the breakdown there, but I'll jump into the cash flow sheet. Um, overall, one, your sheet to, let me go ahead and state it, at the bottom there, the additional appropriations, your sheet might show a $270,889. That's, again, pulling from an old, uh, a few years ago sheet. It, I don't know why it grabbed that, but that's incorrect, and that should come off. But still, the increase decrease uh, in cash equivalents um, is four hundred sixty thousand three hundred twenty-seven dollars and sixty-four cents decrease, um, leaving us at forty-eight percent operating balance, which again is above what we would really need to be at twenty-five percent. Uh, it's kind of what we consider our minimum of where we would want to be. Uh, so we're a little better there. Um, than we projected, but I do want to note that $308,000 is going to the improvement fund. Um, and I also want to note, as I did in 6201, there is about $275,000 for some sewer projects in this year's budget. Um, that's most likely not going to happen this year and would occur next year. And we basically just rebudgeted it for next year. So we could, if the board wished, do a formal budget reduction if desired by that uh, projected amount. So when you factor though that 275, uh, the negative that we're going here is closer to like 180, 180,000. Plus again, there's 308 going into the improvement fund. Um, but if you factor that in, we're, we're gonna be over 50% in cash balance for that operating fund. Would it make it easier or harder on you all um, for the things like you mentioned on this a fund and the one the other fund to go ahead and put more in the budget more in the transfers and then even if you use it in the current year, it wouldn't be a problem instead of, of showing the higher amount? Um I mean, it could have been, it could have been done. I know we did Emily. We did that one year. Um, we were looking at um, the purchase of I think it was one of the trash trucks this year. But instead of doing a reduction last year um, and showing the purchasing capital this year, she just allowed me to put the whole thing in the capital and then make a note in the budget presentation that we weren't spending like two hundred thousand or something in the twenty twenty two budget. Um, so that was nice, but I like being very transparent. I, I mm -hmm. just, you know, that's the piece. I just want to make sure that if I leave it in and we go ahead and increase something else, if I did spend it this year, I just don't want to dip in further than what I could right. possibly. But I'm saying you would go ahead and take it out of capital when you spent it, if you ended up, you know, if like the oh, last project, if instead of feeling like you're overstating your expenses for the year because you're not sure if it's going to happen in 2024 or 2025, if you went ahead and showed it as going into the capital fund, and then if you did spend it in 2024, it would just come out of there. I mean, it's... Well, the budget is appropriating, so if it's not appropriating, then he would have to come back for initial appropriation. And we would so, have to appropriate so I think out of the capital. Just, to, mm -hmm. I think it's just a it. matter of yeah. the process. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, that's what we try to do is go ahead and appropriate it a second time instead mm -hmm. of leaving it just in this year's and leaving it off and then just planning to put it, you know, wherever else or not anything at all next year, but then you'd have to come back and appropriate. So it's trying to do it in transparent with as few steps right. as possible, and that's what's... And sometimes these projects span more than one year. It could happen most, at the end of this year, of and then you... Mm -hmm. That was actually the note for... So mm -hmm. there's three I&I projects... Um, and the note that we placed last year was unobligated funds to be placed in a savings for following year uh, mm -hmm. and used to complete because we don't know what would what we would have wrapped up in investigation and design and then capital. So mm -hmm. um, we have appropriated all of it, and that's um, where we're at. We're in a uh, we'll have something coming to you guys here for um, some design and investigation, but um, on one of them. But then the other two will get shifted, and then part of that. Other
think that's the bulk then. Uh, that covers our cash flow of 6501. What that would leave us to is 6505. The um, capital improvement uh, for the stormwater fund. Um, going into this fund is $308,000. That's a breakdown of 200 for the high rate treatment. Um, and about 108,000 for a couple of um, projects that we know would be coming up. And then coming out of this fund is $270,889 for high rate treatment design. Mm -hmm. um, and I realize that's 200 is going in for high rate and 270 is coming out. We could have probably just, you know, Taken 70 out and left 200, but again, one was in for design as our note, and the other one's kind of in more for construction. So we're just trying to be, again, transparent. And in these funds, these capital improvements, like we were sitting before, it doesn't look like just a bunch of cash set aside. It's very specific uses um, for all these dollars. So that's why uh, you see it kind of 200 going in and 270 coming out for the same, what looks like the same thing. One is kind of design and one is kind of just overall construction or uh, a piece to that. Um, so there's 308 going in, 270, 270 889 coming out. Um, cash flow, uh, as we discussed a few times on these, is sort of irrelevant. Um, there's more coming in. It looks like there's a large, larger sum of money, but again, it's set aside for specific projects. That's all I have for 6505, unless there are other questions. The only other thing we have is 6202. Um, and I won't spend much time on this unless there are questions, but this is basically a pass-through. Mm -hmm. So all those transfer outs we discussed that go to our bond payment go into this fund, and then this fund writes it out to pay. The, so it just the payout comes from here. So it's just a pass-through. There's no real movement um, in this fund. That is all I have, unless there are overall questions about that or any of the other funds, if there are additional questions. I got one for Elijah, maybe, mm -hmm. for the, the, the high-rate treatment project. How far out is that? Um, so potentially four or five years, but mm -hmm. we're trying to look at financing and moving it up so we may have multiple rounds of applying for financing to get because the most expensive project that we've ever seen. Um, Is it like a $30 million <laughs> project? Yeah, between 35 and 50. Okay. Um, and so, uh, like Pat kind of alluded to earlier, the, the farther we get along and the updated, the more updated the estimates get, the higher it, it ends up being. So, yeah. Um, so what, uh, what we're really waiting on right now is um, our flow study um, for our, our system-wide flow study to be updated. Um, once we do that, we know exactly the sizing that we need to, to make it, um, and which is why we put this at the very end of the long-term control plan. Um, we didn't want to over-design or under-design, um, so we can do all these other, other projects, um, come in, uh, update our flow study, know exactly how big it needs to be. Um, and then we'll design um, that project around those flows. Um, so uh, I'm going to say two to five years out is is that ballpark of when it will um, when it will happen. We have to be done by 2030. 2030. Yes. Yeah. And really, it's, I think it's 2028 20, or nine because there's. Um, Post-construction monitoring that has to happen there the, after the project gets implemented. So not that um, far away, though, if it's really not. You start planning for it, and you realize we're actually at the end of of things for for the long-term control plan. Really so. expensive, yeah. Yeah, a really expensive project. Um, mm -hmm. It is. So um, I mean, the good piece is that we are trying to. Um, 
and utilize technology that will uh, help us retrofit an existing building, our tertiary building, and uh, which needs some rehab anyway. And so we'll be able to accomplish both of those things with the same project um, instead of having two separate projects and, and a whole new um, building. We may have to uh, to add some tankage for um, disinfection, but the idea is that we can retrofit um, what we have uh, with these big cloth discs um, for filtration, both for our normal flows and for high rate um, treatment flows. Um, which probably saves us $10 million, being able to do this versus mm -hmm. having to build yeah. two separates. Yeah. It would, mm. yeah. So it's a huge deal. And we're kind of coming in at a good time. I mean, there's, I don't want to say it's brand new technology, but it's it's just starting to be implemented kind of in several places around Indiana. Um, and so uh, we we weren't the ones that had to sell this idea to, to IDEM. Um, it's, uh, that's been on somebody else's dime. Mm -hmm. um, but we're able to come in after the fact and, and um, see one that it's worked and two that uh, the regulators are, are okay with it. Um, uh, it's a little bit. The state's been approving them now for about six years or so. Yes, probably. IDEM's been approving them. So. I have two things. First is my 6202 came with no numbers. So, like in the 2024. So, I think even though it is a wash, I should still see ins, transfers, ins and outs, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes, okay. um, but I will get that to you. And, and again, that. when we, yeah. the goal, right, Emily, is next Tuesday. That's the twelfth, right? That's the day we should be bringing the resolutions here. I think I have to look at our meeting next week. Okay. Yes, which would have two sets of resolutions: one for the sanitary board, one for the stormwater board. But in the sanitary board, you'll get six two hundred one, six two hundred two, and twenty two twenty one with mm -hmm. their. The ones that have improvement funds, you'll get that, and stormwater will have stormwater. Okay. Um, but you will get the updated sheets. Uh, they'll be a part of the resolution, the attachments to the resolution, okay. so you will be able to see okay. those values. So. And even though the other is, I think I asked this last year too, but you can tell me again. Um, even though we have the, the property tax fund, have we historically gone ahead and approved it just as a matter of uh, I don't think so. Of course. We did not. Okay. Uh, we I presented it every year. Okay. Um, and some of this got tweaked a little bit in 2020. Um, in 2020, I think city council did all four funds, uh, or they just did the tax fund, but I presented all four okay. to both spots. In 2021, they wanted just to hear the tax fund because that's the one that goes in the ordinance. I still present all four here, but we only do resolutions that do... They don't include 6601 or, or it's improvement 6607. We just hear those. Um, now, this board still has the authority, obviously, all, like, purchases made through the year, mm -hmm. contracts, all that still come here. But mm -hmm. uh, that will be as an ordinance uh, through city council to be, okay. to be passed. And that's going to be on the 18th. Okay. The, back to the high rate. Um, we don't need to discuss it today, but but at some point in time, I think we need to have a, a discussion, explanation for both ourselves, but also for the for the general public that we're sitting here saying we're, we've got a thirty five to fifty million dollar project, and when you say high rate, I'm like, well, what does that mean? Is that because we often say it's like the one hundred year rainfall event? So are we spending? 35 to $50 million on something that's going to happen once in 100 years. So we need to have, I think, some yeah. explanation. So just a on quick one, and we'll go over it later, but just to give a quick one while we're here and yes. it's brought up, the treatment plant is designed for 18 million gallons per day mm -hmm. with a peak flow of 36 that it can do for short durations. Mm -hmm. What the modeling is, and I know there's lots of nuance and things we're still working out, but roughly being able to do that one in 10 year statistical storms, one hour peak, which Elijah said we were getting that modeling data, but that's roughly 100 million gallons. Mm. So anything above 36 to this 100 is what this will treat, which is what we expect to meet that criteria. But anytime we're above 36, this would be used. Right. Which varies year to year. It depends on rainfall. But if you get an inch of rain, you're going to be above 36. Right. So anytime you get above that you're going to need it. Which you won't max it out to 100, but you'll be above 36. <clears throat> and there's a lot of other 
things in the weeds on treatment process. It doesn't mean every time you get like 38, you're going to have to open this. There's, mm -hmm. there's ways you can absorb things through empty tanks if it's been dry for a while or if your mm -hmm. ground table's low. And, and if that one inch occurred over 24 hours or just <coughs> happened in one hour, right? There's a lot of variables. But it, this will basically, to meet the permit, we're roughly going to have to be able to treat 100 million, and that's what the high rate is to do above 36 to that 100. Mm -hmm. But that will get roughly used every time you get over 36, which happens. It's still not a lot. I mean, it's so not going to be like every week you use it, but. We would still have four to six. Our permit, our long-term control plan still allows four to six untreated overflows per year. <coughs> um, and that's based on a, an average uh, annual rainfall year. Um, and that's where I, I think they're still trying to figure out how to. Uh, regulate some of that. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, I was just at a, a conference here a couple weeks ago and, um, you know, still talking, uh, talking through that with the different communities um, and uh, so, yeah, that's it's hard because, again, it's one in 10 years statistical. Mm -hmm. That means no if, if the one in 10 perfect. changes. And, and what we've, changes. you know, seen in the past couple mm -hmm. of years everywhere is is yeah it's a, it's sort of a moving target and that's a little hard because it's a it was a 20-year commitment mm -hmm. that we had to be done by 2030 essentially mm -hmm. and the target isn't fixed down yet so it's a little yeah. and i think that's what they're trying to sort through is the intent is not to necessarily say oh well, well, you know rainfall might be changing or what whatever it, it is what we designed based on this criteria um how, how do we regulate it such that um you know that's that's the. That's well, it's the more fixed, that we're yeah. Going, so, but they haven't too. So. Well, and I know. I mean, I believe I know that the the parks department is planning to do more, along our you know using our river, as um, more recreational, recreational yeah. um, and pulling and that's, people that's to it, it, and we need to and form. and we need to to do our part certainly to to do that. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, I. Nobody liked that we had to come in and do super sewer separation and that it cost the money, but it is, environmentally, it is needed. I mean, the difference in the river quality before separation and after is, is no, not just here, but nationally. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's a big difference. I, um, so it is, unfortunately, it's costly, and it's just what every old city had to do because when cities like Richmond were built over 100 years ago, there weren't any wastewater treatment plants. Every pipe went to the river. Mm -hmm. You know, and then in the 20s and 30s and 40s, you start having to build them. Well, they didn't care if they had a few overflows. It was already better than that every day. It mm -hmm. all went there, right? And then now you get here and it's, it just wasn't designed this way. So you have to go back in and do that. I mean, the good news is, is once you're separated, you're separated, right? I mean, it's not mm -hmm. you know, just getting everything out and, you know. I just said these storms, certain sizes, different things. I mean, there's a lot of variables to this. It's not simple by any means, but. Now, the way Indianapolis does, did it, right, is they, they put tunnels, right? They, they and, did. And they like put storage. Yeah. Right. Storage. Right. And, and actually, so that's not completely off of our table either. Um, so part of the modeling is to determine. Um, Kind of that curve of how fast is the water? When does that peak happen? And is it a, a, a long, slow peak or is it a short, fast peak? Um, and it may be more economical to store a slow, fast peak, um, at least a percentage of it, uh, at which would reduce the size of, of high rate treatment. Um, so that's not completely mm -hmm. out of um, the realm. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just have to, to see where we. We end up um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of things in the works. Any other questions? I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> it could go another half an hour. Yeah, we no. before. Thank you. Uh, as those always, are, thanks are to things, so thanks to both know. you, thanks yeah. to Emily for for um, keeping us on target and doing doing all your hard work for the yep. budgets. Every year. Uh, do we need to have a motion to adjourn or anything for a workshop? <coughs> I don't think so. No. We're just done. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you all.